والسلام على رسول الله ابو بكر از اوف اكزاجريتنج هي از بين ذا بيلر اوف اس اند الحمد لله وي ستارتد وذ ا جود تيم اوف برادرز هو كيم توجذر وذ ا نوبل ايديا اوف برينجينج يونيتي امونج مسلمز ان كينيا افريكا اند ان ذا وورلد ان جنرال اند ذا ايديا واز ستارتد لاست يير and with the help of Sheikh Said, who encouraged us, became a patron. He became the speakers coordinator, so it was easy for us to get all the speakers and uh, everything in place. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alim. We were a team of about uh, 10 to 12 brothers who grew up over time. Um, I would like to mention a few of their names. I know some of them don't want to be mentioned, but uh, it's always good to recognize others as a sign of recognition and hard work that they've been putting over the time. I'll start with Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr Salim, who is our MC. He's been uh, one of our driving force. Uh, Abdi Ismail, he is one of our Kandu brothers. Delivers, as always. Yunis, the Mr. Fix-It. Uh, Mohammed, the money man. Uh, Abu Ali, uh, Ali Khalid, who's in charge of the volunteers, has done a fantastic job to mobilize the youth across Nairobi. Um, we have Haider, a youth himself, who was one of our team members from the start because we wanted to make sure we had as many young people or men and women as possible. Uh, we also coordinated with the ladies, even though I consider myself a little bit conservative, in such matters, and alhamdulillah, we managed to coordinate really, really well. Um, I would like to thank everybody for coming, and inshallah, make this day a successful day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Thank you, Brother Ogle, especially for saying you wanted us, you wanted young people. That makes me very, very, feel very young. Thank you very much for that. Um, a sad note, uh, our brother, Dr. Islam Muhammad Salim from Mombasa is unfortunately unwell. We ask you to make dua, Allah to grant him shifa, inshallah. So, and we would like to take this opportunity to tell you that we have tried as much as possible to make this event success and to make you as comfortable as possible would like to apologize in case anything does not go as planned. And we have people who are ready to listen and sort out any matter. Please be patient with us. It's the first time we're doing this. And in case we make any mistake, please make dua that we make it better. Our next speaker, who needs very little introduction, is a man who's well known for those people who watch the TV. Mr. Wasim Kemson, or rather Sheikh Wasim Kemson, graduated from Medina Islamic University and holds a BA honors in Sharia. This man needs very little introduction. And once you hear from him once or twice, you'll be able to tell for yourself what kind of person, this, what kind of effort this man has done in his life. And the, uh, rather than the message is giving, him as a person is a good example of what some of us can do. When we live here, if you think that you have something to do in your life, there's still time. This is a man who's a good example of what you can achieve in your life when you decide to do. Welcome, Brother Wasim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين I begin in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى 
And may the peace and blessings be upon his final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he showers his blessings and his mercy upon all of us and upon all of our families and upon all those who are present here with us. Ameen. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this opportunity to travel to Kenya, specifically Nairobi, a very famous and beautiful city. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me also to meet a number of blessed and chosen people. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them all and to reward all those who have participated in making this event possible. A lot of hard work goes towards establishing such an event. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us patience and to allow us to benefit over the next couple of days from the words that are mentioned from the guests and respected shuyukh. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Messenger of Allah. One of the most misunderstood people in history. Throughout the next couple of days, you will hear many things that are said about this individual. This man whom every single believer places their love for him over they most be loved with them now. Because it is part of our Iman to love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa more than our children, more than our mothers and our fathers and our wives or our husbands. Because our ultimate goal and journey is bi'ithnillah to the paradise. And we won't reach the paradise unless we follow the way of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Only a person, even if that person doesn't adhere to the Islamic faith, but for them to know and realize that in the life of, of any Muslim, the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, supersedes the love of anyone that they come across in their lives. Now I want to begin with a short advice that was given by a famous scholar hundreds of years ago. And it is this advice that by Allah's permission, I hope will set a number of important advices and will serve as a foundation for many things, if not all, that is said over the next couple of days. This man, his name is Ibrahim ibn Adham. Ibrahim ibn Adham was a, was a person, was a very wise man, a scholarly person. The people of his time, they came to him and they questioned him. And they said, oh Ibrahim, Allah tells us in the Quran, Allah is inform us. And they recited the verse, which is in Surah Al-Ghafir, in verse number 60, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبَ لَكُمْ And your Lord says, call upon me and I will answer you. Very simple. Call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the one who is going to answer you. We have been supplicating, we've been calling upon Allah for so long. However, we have not seen the fruits. We have not seen that Allah has answered our supplications. Ibrahim ibn Adham, may Allah have mercy upon him, gave them a response. Until this day we are mentioning this response. They were living in Iraq. He said, oh people of Basra, 
O oh, people of Basra, you know Allah, however you do not fulfill his rights. That you recite the Quran, but you do not act according to it. That you claim to love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but you have abandoned his traditions. You have abandoned his sunnah. You claim to love the Jannah, but you are not working to attain it. You say that you fear, you claim that you fear the hellfire, but you have made your hell yourselves hostages to it. You keep yourselves busy in analyzing the faults of others instead of analyzing the faults of your own selves. You eat from the bounties and the blessings of Allah, but you never, you never thank him for that. That you bury your dead and never do you take lessons from their death. This beautiful advice covers so many things. Our love of Allah, love of the messenger and Al-Quran, taking to account of our own selves. And it is the specific advice that Ibrahim rahimahullah mentioned, that you claim to love an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yet you have abandoned, you are ignorant, and that you don't really know who this individual is. The famous companion Anas radiallahu anhu stated that the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم that none of you will truly believe that your iman will never be complete حتى أكون أحب إليه until I become more beloved to that person من والده وولده والناس أجمعين until I become more beloved to that person than their father than their children in fact all of mankind this is a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa telling us that we are to love him. This is not out of arrogance. This is not out of pride. Because you will find over the next two days that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was chosen by Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him, peace be upon him, to be the final messenger of mankind. And so therefore he is deserving. He is deserving of our love. He is deserving that we follow him. Whatever he told us to do, we try our best to fulfill it. Whatever he told us to stay away from, that we will do our very utmost to stay away from that. A man, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an Aisha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa she narrates the story. She said, a man, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, Ya Rasulullah, O oh Messenger of Allah, you are more dearer to me than my family, my children, and myself. And sometimes I'm sitting at home. I'm not sitting, I'm at home, and I'm just thinking that when I remember you, the love I have for you. I forget myself. I'm overwhelmed that I would like to come and see you at that moment. Now for many of us, because I want to put this into context, sometimes you hear narrations, sometimes you hear ayat, but somehow your heart doesn't feel it. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ do they not ponder over the Qur'an? Allah Jalla wa tells us to, to think over the Qur'an. The Qur'an is not there just for you to just recite. Think about it. Understand it. Ponder over it. Likewise, these incidents, when they happened, a man, he comes to the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, Ya Rasulullah, you're more beloved to me than anyone. When I'm alone, I think about you, and that Allah chose you, how fearful you are of Allah, you're such a great person. I'm so overwhelmed. I just want to be there and sit with you. To be in your company. But then I realize that we are human beings. 
that you will die and that I will die. And what you put forth for Allah, how close you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deeds that you do, it's not like me. I am not as close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you, O Messenger of Allah. And the deeds that you do, the actions, I am not like you, Ya Rasulullah. So in the Jannah, in the Paradise, and this is how much that this companion, not only did he want to be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this life, he wanted to be with the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam in the hereafter, and he was worried that the ranks of the most pious, the ranks of the messengers and the prophets, they will be at the highest levels of Jannah. Me, I just hope to get into Jannah. Even if it is the lowest, I will be happy. The prophets and messengers, they will be in the highest places. So he was worried. O oh, Messenger of Allah, will we not be able to see you? Will we not have your company in the paradise? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how does he answer this? Because what he has said is true. The prophets and messengers are on a higher rank. They are chosen by Allah. Subhanah. As for you and I, we can't imagine to be on the rank and level of the prophets and messengers. Our deeds, the sincerity, is nowhere near the messengers and the prophets, peace be upon them all. So how can I imagine to be with these noble and the best of people? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not answer him. He did not answer him until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed an ayah. An ayah, a verse that gives us all hope. Gives us the hope to do as much as we can. And this ayah is in Surah An-Nisa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Am I from those who obey Allah and His Messenger? Alayhi salatu salam, I will try my best. فَأُولَٰئِكَ Those people, فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَا الَّذِينَ عَنَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقة. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, those will be with the ones upon upon whom Allah has blessed and chosen. From the prophets, from those steadfast people, affirmers of truth the martyrs and the righteous. And an excellent are those as companions. So really, what is Allah telling us here? What is the meaning of the ayah? Allah Jalla wa ala is telling us, whoever obeys Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are those whom Allah has blessed. They were chosen people. Who are these chosen people? النبيين, the prophets. والصديقين, those who affirm truth. والشهداء, the martyrs. والصالحين, and the righteous people. These four people, or types of people, are given the blessings of Allah to obey Him and His Messenger وسلم, And what a beautiful companionship they will have. These four types of people, they will have a companionship together in the hereafter. To shed further light on this, Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, he came, he explained that a man, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just to shed some further light on this ayah in Surah An-Nisa. A man, he said, Ya Rasulullah, and how you can see the companions how much that they were searching for good. They wanted to not miss out on the blessings of Allah. Oh, Messenger of Allah. When is the hour? When's the day of judgment? Now, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us 
إنما علمها عند الله. The knowledge of the coming of the hour is only with Allah. Nobody knows it. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew when yawm al-qiyamah is. This was a knowledge that wasn't given to an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how to answer? How to answer? When is yawm al-qiyamah? An Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him a beautiful answer. He said to him, what have you prepared for it? Even if it is next week, next Friday. Okay. What are you going to do in the meantime? That's what is important. He said, what did you, or what have you prepared for it? The man's response was simple. He was all honest and he was open. He said, I am a man who's not frequently offering all voluntary prayers and staying awake at night. All the extra money that I have, I'm giving is charity. And all the extra days that I have, I'm fasting. I'm not that kind of person. I establish my salah. If there's money that is to be given, I give it. When the month of Ramadan comes, you know, I fast. But the voluntary acts, the extra acts, you know, I don't do that. However, however, I can give one thing. And that is Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are more beloved to me than anything. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the glad tidings, Anta ma'aman ahbabd. That you will be with whom you love. In the hereafter. If you truly love an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will be with him. Loving him means what? What does it mean? Is it a, a statement of the tongue? That, oh, I love Rasul Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Does it mean I'm going to clap and dance and say, I love Rasul Allah? What does it mean to say, I love him? It means that you will put his love, what he loved, before what you love. What he didn't like, you won't like it. His sunnah, his traditions, what he advised us of, is paramount. It's the most important thing in your life. That the moment that you wake up in the morning, you are aware of the advice that he gave to you. When you open your, lie, or your eyes from sleep, what do you say? Alhamdulillahilladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. All praise is due to Allah who gave me life after I woke from the small death, which is sleep. And to him we will return. You remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but who taught you that dua? Before you make your wudu, before you enter the bathroom, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubathi wal khaba'ith. When you, uh, when you exit from the bathroom, azakum Allah, ghufranak. When you put your clothes on, Bismillah. When you enter the masjid, when you exit the masjid, when you leave your home, when you enter your home, when you meet your brother, when you meet your sister, Assalamu Alaikum. When you pray, who taught you how to pray? An Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you have seen me praying. Who taught you? To glorify Allah. Who taught you how to praise Allah? When you say Subhanallah, when you say Sami Allah liman hamida in your salah, it is a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa who taught you that. This is you showing your love, adhering to what He gave you. Because this is what gives you your identity. This is what gives you. The love, the reality of truly loving An Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Always ask Allah. Supplicate to Allah that Allah Jalla wa ala gives you a true, a sincere love and a real love for our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Really supplicate. Oh Allah, give me a sincere and true love in following our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The greatest man, the greatest individual that Allah placed on this earth. 
and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you from his ummah and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you from those who say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is a great honor that Allah jalla wa ala that he gave to you so be thankful be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that what he gave you wa kum min as as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the believers to be thankful to be grateful I want to mention another another story that occurred during the life of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when that man he came to the Prophet from asking about the Yawm al-Qiyamah when it is Anas ibn Malik was present and he heard the answer he was a young boy at the time maybe eight nine or ten years old very young Anas used to serve the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to know what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do from the morning to the evening he done it from himself he said you know and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I served him for ten years did you know he never said to me in ten years he never addressed me in any bad way he was always kind to me true to me honest with me fair with me this is the person that we are talking about I hope that over the space of today and tomorrow that you have more of an insight that indeed you are a true follower of a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that your love has increased for him that what he sacrificed and that what he struggled for is something that is in the forefront of your mind at all times so Anas radiallahu an he said you know when the Prophet والسلام, when he made that statement that you will be with whom that you love I love an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Anas he said and he said, I love Abu Bakr and I love Umar and I hope that I will be with them due to the love that I have for them. Even though my actions and my deeds is nowhere near what they have done. But I hope my love will be sufficient. How merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. You may not do the deeds and the actions but your love of them is sufficient subhanallah your love for them is sufficient that you will be with them you'll be able to see and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and say to him ya rasulullah you know i believed in you and i loved you and i never met you his response to you the companions radiallahu anhu do you know how they used to describe the prophet alayhi salatu salam when he used to smile they said his face was more handsome more beautiful than seeing the moon in the middle of the month a full moon when you know you see that full moon how bright and beautiful it is the face of a Nabi والسلام, was more beautiful than that and that you will see him and you'll say Ya Rasulullah I believed in you and I followed you and he will smile at you and who knows what he will say to you alayhi salatu wasalam the companions themselves they had this within themselves that they had a hope even though that they may not reach the deeds what about us what deeds what have we brought forth compared to these mountains of companions what did we or what do we have what we have is that we can put forth our love because there are three people that they will never, true, never truly taste halawatul iman the sweetness of iman do you know what that means the sweetness of iman is it that like you have two or three sugars in your tea and that's sweet what does it mean the sweetness of iman sa'ad the happiness the tranquility the satisfaction the pleasure of believing in Allah and his messenger you will never truly taste this or having this level of tranquility love pleasure 
until you have three things. What are those three things? Number one is that you love your brother or that she, she loves her sister for the sake of Allah. Not for the sake of the dunya, not for the sake of money, not for the sake of position, for the sake of Allah only, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love you for the sake of Allah. And the companions, radiallahu anhu, would say that to each other, Uhibbaka fillah, I love you for the sake of Allah. Number two, that Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to them than anything else. And thirdly, that after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guiding them and saving them from the hellfire, that they would hate to return to a state of disbelief just as much as that they would hate to be thrown into the hellfire. They recognize and know that following Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the only way that they want to follow. This is the only advice, the only commands and prohibitions that they know that will take them to the paradise. Know that an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was chosen by Allah. Allah Jalla wa'ala chose the best human being for us. So your love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shows that you truly love Allah as well. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the best for you by choosing the best of messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill the true love of an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all of our hearts. And in the love in the hearts of all of our children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from any fitan or any danger that may come to our hearts to divert us away from reaching and meeting our beloved. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me, forgive us all and have mercy upon us all. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakum wa allahu khaira. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallahu khair, brother Wasim. What we're going to have is a brief question and answer session after every talk by one speaker. The order of the question and answer is we're going to have three standing microphones. One is right in the middle of the ladies, one is on this side, and the third one is right at the back. We ask you to queue to the nearest microphone with your question. In case you do not want to ask the question, please tell one of the volunteers nearby your question and they will ask it on your behalf. We also request that you try to keep your question relevant to the discussion that the speaker just had and to keep it as precise as possible so that all of us can benefit by asking our questions and getting a proper response from the speakers. Uh, I need any the volunteers near the speakers, please. Sisters, you can also maybe look for a piece of paper and write your question, a piece of paper, and hand it over if you feel you cannot stand up and ask a question. Uh, um, I, I, request, I request you have one position for, for the questions so that the microphone is not moving around and people can, can keep. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
The question is, uh, I would like to know how do you demonstrate the love of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? How how, do, how, how do, do you demonstrate? Demonstrate. Yeah, that we've been told that uh, we need to love, but how do we demonstrate that love? The question is that how do you demonstrate your love for our Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam? To demonstrate, to show. Part of our love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to outwardly show. To outwardly show that your love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is evident, not to prove to others. But there are certain things that you do, certain actions that you do, which show and you show Allah jalla wa ala that you are prepared at times to make a sacrifice. For example, in how that a man or a woman will dress or how they will behave in terms of manners and characteristics. So the more you know about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because in itself, how to demonstrate your love is, you know, is, is a lecture. But first of all, it begins with ilm, with knowledge, for you to know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you don't know him, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, you can't possibly show and demonstrate your love for him. So the more you know about him, the stronger bond, the stronger the love that you will have. So therefore, you will maybe want to sit how he sat while eating. You may want to eat how he ate. There are certain aspects of dress that he would dress, alayhi salatu salam. And most importantly, because wearing clothes, anyone can do is to have, and I would focus on this specifically, my dear brothers and sisters, is to focus upon the akhlaq, the manner and the good character of a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you focus on this, this will be one of the reasons. Not only will you be able to be with a Nabi alayhi wa sallam because of your mahabba for him, but you will be from the closest of people. The closest of people to the Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment, ahasinuhum akhlaqa, Those who have the best manners. The manners of the Prophet ﷺ distinguish him from any person. So to demonstrate your love for him is to know his manners. His manners with Allah Jalla wa ala in his worship his fear and his hope and his trust and his manners with himself how he would be firm upon himself in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the furthest away from having a bad tongue no swearing no cursing but having a good tongue a soft tongue and interacting with others with a good manner I think this is one of the best ways that you can demonstrate your love for the Prophet ﷺ in following his manners and in his characteristics and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his best. Do we have a question from this side? Please. Uh, we have written questions and also oral questions. So we'll start with the sister. She'll give an oral question and then I'll read the written questions. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is uh, Zamzam Nasser. I'm a mother of three. Ashay. And uh, my question to Sheikh Wasim is to start with on his lecture, he clearly stated out that uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most confused uh, messenger on this earth. And uh, that is proven by what is being done all over the world through the, the I mean, uh, in the magazine they put him as a cartoon and they mocked around with him. So my question to Brother Wasim is, how do Muslims react on this? Shukran. Okay. Uh, just to clarify, he said 
most misunderstood and not confused. That needs to be, uh, yeah, that needs to be clarified, yeah. That the individual himself, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is misunderstood. I think that was the intention, of course, behind the question. Um, he's the most misunderstood individual in modern times. Now, this isn't something new, by the way. It's not something new. But, you know, people may, individuals, minorities, it's not everybody. There may be some people who's, who dishonor or attempt to dishonor. Fundamentally, let me tell you one thing. You and I may apply for a university or we may need a job and I need a recommendation. I need a recommendation, so I go to my former boss or I go to my teacher or my imam or a sheikh and they write me something called a tazkiyah. They write me a recommendation saying so-and-so is a good character, he's trustworthy, they'll do a good job for you. Maybe it's true to some extent. However, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has a recommendation from Rabbul Alameen. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Oh, and Nabi, you are upon a great character. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is none to dishonor him. No matter what, if the entire creation tried to lower the status of the Prophet ﷺ, never would they be able to do that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored the Prophet ﷺ, number one. Number two, that if unfortunately people try to dishonor an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa then they will carry that responsibility, that responsibility on the Day of Judgment when they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This isn't something new as I mentioned. This has been done through centuries, through the Crusades in the 10th and 11th and 12th century. Yeah, a thousand years ago, the Crusades used to try to dishonor that Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his followers, they, they were barbarians, they eat you. Then it's nothing new. It's nothing new. However, that the Muslim needs to react in a way which is befitting. A Muslim reacts in a way which is befitting with wisdom. Don't just act on your emotions because, of course, it hurts us. If somebody says something towards your mother or your children, how do you feel? It's an insult to you. Now imagine, as a believer, as we mentioned, and Nabi Ali is more beloved to us than all of them. So to insult him is, more, is worse than somebody insulting our own mother. So I hate that somebody would insult me like that. Even if that person, he says, my intention is not to insult you. I've got, no, I got no problem with you. That's irrelevant what you think. Let me tell you what is relevant. As the insulting the Nabi is insulting me. That is the reality. But how I react is of the most utmost importance. Do not react or don't lower yourself to how they would speak to you by you cursing and swearing back to them and asking, if you like, with posters off of their head. We need to get rid of that. This is not how to react. This is not how for us to react. You need to react in a way which demonstrates and shows wisdom. That the Muslim is not going to be somebody who just has always a knee-jerk reaction. When the media decides that let's just rile up the Muslims for a couple of weeks, let's put something in the news and you see Muslims behaving in a way which hmm, they lose themselves and then they calm down for a little while and then they feed the media again with something else and then you see the Muslims. It's like somebody's got a joystick controlling the Muslims. Put something in the media and you just see them jumping around and crazy and shouting and screaming and 
it doesn't demonstrate or show any hikmah and in any wisdom in the reaction to that. Rather, there are many ways that you can respond to this. Because them insulting the Nabi has no weight at all. Rather, respond, respond in a way which we know how Allah has honored him and we honor him as well والسلام, by speaking, making clear who this individual is, who is this person. And the last thing I'm going to mention on this, Bil Munasibah, subhanAllah, that just a, maybe a week ago, there was a conference. And even before that, actually, there was a person who was against Islam, against Muhammad, والسلام, said many things which billah, some of us would never dream of saying. That person embraced Islam. That person embraced Islam. Just a few days ago, his son embraced Islam. SubhanAllah. This isn't something that maybe you read from thousands of years ago. Maybe you believe it, maybe you don't. This is something that happened in our day now. Somebody was an enemy of Islam. Said something very bad about Nabi but they embraced Islam. Allah guided them. So if a person is as confused that they are making such statements, show them what they are missing out on. Show them what they are missing out on. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Jazakallah khair. Do we still have the written questions from the ladies? Please just read them out quickly. There are a lot of questions about Mawlid. Is Mawlid a way of demonstrating the love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What other question do you have? And about Iman, a lot of questions came in. What is the highest status of Iman? And how do I attain the sweetness of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How do you know that you love someone for the sake of Allah? Okay. Um, due to strain of time, we'll try and answer those questions that are relevant to the discussion. And all of the other questions, we'll try and answer them whenever we get the time, or if the relevant discussion is brought in. So please bear with us. We will try as much as possible to answer all your questions. Yes. Uh, we have a question from our brother who recently converted. He says, uh, if I only use Surah Al-Fatiha in our prayer, is it accepted? Okay. Uh, do we have any other question? Yes, we do. Yes. There's a parent here. She says, if I raised our, uh, my children through the... She says, I raised my children through the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu but now they've grown up and I don't see them looking like Muslims. They look like non-Muslims. What do we parents have to do about that? Okay. Uh, shall I just repeat the questions and maybe you can pick the one that we have So, um, one of the questions from the ladies was, how do you attain the high, you know, high status of Iman? The other one was, how do you show the love for one another in the sake of... Uh, Allah. Ah. Uh, the third question was about the, uh, the ch raising the children. Yeah. And one question about the fatha. I'll try to be quick. I'll answer the last one first. Inshallah. Although it's a fiqh question, that if somebody's newly embraced Islam, and uh, they're learning the prayer, they learn the movements, you know, you stand up, then bow, then prostrate. Learning Al Fatiha, the opening chapter of the Quran is, is, is very important for you. Now, if you have only memorized that while you're standing, you recite that, and then you do the short statements in the rest of your prayer, then your prayer is valid because the recitation of Al-Fatiha is one of the pillars of the prayer. Reciting other chapters is something which is voluntary for you. Okay, if you didn't do it, then the prayer is valid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you steadfast, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase you in knowledge. Ameen. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Imanu, Iman is 70 and some branches. Yani something like 73 or 74 branches. A'alaha, the highest of these branches is La ilaha illallah. To understand what this kalima means, what it necessitates, how do I act upon it? This is the highest level of Iman, to understand and, and implement Upon la ilaha illallah. As for how do we show our love 
uh, for our brothers, for our sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Allah established, subhanahu wa ta'ala, a brotherhood, a sisterhood between us, which is a great blessing for us all. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then showed us how to establish this brotherhood and sisterhood. When he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَا يُؤْمِنُ أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى يُحِبُّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِهِ that none of you will truly believe until he loves for his brother or he loves for his sister or he loves for himself. So you have something. But you would love that your brother or your sister would have that before yourself. You become a selfless person. That you would love that your brother or your sister would have that before yourself. This is one of the ways that you show your love for your brother or your sister. Likewise, in another authentic hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ gave us a number of advices that we do not deceive, we do not cheat, we do not forsake our brother or our sister. We never abandon them. If they need our help, we help them. If they need advice, we advise them. And it is these practices, practical, practical advices that we can do every day. I receive a gift. I like this gift. I want to give it to somebody. Tfaddal. You give it to them. What did I do to deserve this? You didn't do anything. But you are my brother and I want to give this to you as a gift. Or you are my sister and I want to give this to you as a gift. Can you imagine that this was a society that we lived in? Selfless. We give to one another. Because as you give and other people have the same thing, and you will receive as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is missed. Jazakallah khair. Um, we have one more question, which is what makes our Iman weak? The strengthening of Iman and the weakening of Iman is something that we accept. Somebody who just embraces Islam, is that person's Iman as strong as the Iman of Abu Bakr or the Iman of Umar or Uthman and Ali? عنهم, no, it's not. So our Iman, it fluctuates. It goes up and it goes down. How does it go up? It goes up by you worshipping Allah. Quite simply. The more you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the stronger your Iman will become bi It's like when you go to the gym. You want to you know, be, work out your muscles. You want to become stronger, you need to do weights. You build yourself up. If you stop doing the weights, then your muscles, they become weaker. So if you stop worship, you involve yourself in haram. And don't ever belittle haram. Don't think this is a small sin. Because the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa said, لا تنظروا إلى صغر الخطيئة Do not look at the smallness of a sin. Yes, there are big sins. Yes, there are small sins. But if we're doing like tijara, we're doing business, okay? I haven't committed any big sins. I just, you know, involve in the small ones. No. Don't look at the smallness of your sin. Rather, look at the one whom you've obeyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you disobeyed Allah. Whether it was a small sin, you disobeyed Allah subhanahu So stay away from the haram. Stay away from things which will weaken your iman. Anything that is haram, anything which causes you to take you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there may be a danger for you. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Jazakallah khair. Um, I think we, this is the first question and answer session. And um, in the next one, I hope we'll be able to limit the questions to the discussions because this is just the first discussion. Some of the discussions are going to, speakers are going to come and answer uh, the questions or rather address the issues that have not yet been uh, discussed. I would like, uh, can maybe I think what question and answer time is, is done, maybe we can. Okay, maybe just one.
names are Abdi Abdile. I'm a person of hearing impaired. Uh, how do we strengthen our love for Prophet Muhammad, especially the deaf and the uh, uh, blind uh, from, the ch from the childhood? Okay. Can I request that we give the speakers a chance to come and address this? And if late in the day or during the discussion that is not addressed, please, I will make sure you, that you get a chance and the question will be answered. This is a venue to answer exactly that question. So please give us a chance. We'll try and answer you. In fact, what I would like to do now is tell you that this is the first step of a journey. We're going to take you on a journey, a journey of faith. And the first step is we did, we chose the topic, the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are going to tell you why the love of the Prophet, how is it linked to Iman. And I think Sheikh Wasim did a very good narration to that. Okay. Okay. All right. The question will be answered. Okay. All right. Assalamu alaikum. I feel bad that he asked the question, I don't answer it. Tayyip. It was a general a question, however, there was one specific part to it which I believe is very important. And that is that loving a Nabi alayhi but instilling that from, you know, and having that from a very young age. It is very important when we teach our children that we make the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam something real. Okay, he needs to be real. It is not something which is abstract and like a theory that they don't understand it. They need to be described, told, this is what he used to look like. How many of us know what he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to look like? This is how he used to eat. Do you know why I sit like this? My daughter, my, do you know why I dress like this? Because the Prophet, alayhi wa taught me. And then you teach it to your children. So the example that, that, you're, that you're giving to your child is a very real example. It is something very real, as though they can touch it. That when they are questioned, why do you do this? Because my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught me this. And it is that portion of the question that I think is extremely important. That when your children, they are taught to love a Nabi alayhi wa sallam, it needs to be a real example, a living example. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of our children. Allahumma ameen.